How you doing there? It's Fred Wagner, uh, Fred Wagner Art Studio, Papa's Painting Tips. I've got uh, a project that I'm working on. I originally had it, uh, a whole bunch of videos, and my phone locked up because there's not enough space on it anymore. So I am limited to what I can do right now. I got to come up with a different recording source if I want to continue with YouTube videos. So my phone is just not going to cut it. So let me spin this around and uh, show you what I'm working on and maybe get a little bit of video for you. So you can, uh, I'm looking at my own image. I should look at the lens. Uh, let me let me spin this around and uh, I'll show you what I'm working on. And it's in reference to combination of colored pencil airbrush, and I think I'm going to throw in a little bit of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, watercolor, uh, just for white highlights and such. Okay, let me spin this. All right, you're seeing Charlie in front of me, but this is what I'm working on. I, I changed my setup. I used to use that easel right there, and it's getting harder for me to, uh, study my hand and such, and it's hurting my back. So I picked up a drawing board easel, and this is the painting I'm working on. I got my iPad sitting next to it for my reference picture, and that's the painting I'm working on. These are my polychromos pencils that I'm using uh, to add in color. My California Air Tool Compressor, my custom Micron SB, my other airbrushes are in my stand over there like normal. My ETAC EFX paints what I'm using. Okay, and I've got a Charlie on my lap. Say hi, Charlie. <laughs> Let's get going. All right, first, I've got some color mixed up for my base color. It's opaque flesh tone, and it's got uh, some... Azo orange in it, and a little bit of sepia smoke. And what I'm doing is I, I've mixed it to my mid-tones like always. And uh, I'm going to do a little additive to it to bring it a little more reddish orange. Um, I think I went too orange up in here. I might missed over that with a little base color. Um, with a little white, just just to uh, lighten it up a hair. Although it's actually right spot on with uh, his forehead. So anyways, this is what I've been working on. And uh, I'm going to get some color in my cup. I know you can't see. few drops of color. And, uh, let's do just a drop of red in here. Some naphthol red. I think that's how you say that. And this is my my normal painting uh, process. The only thing I've added is uh, do two drops of red. And... Um, mix that around. Before I add my water, I mix my color around to see where it's at. I may have to add a little white or a touch of yellow just to because that's quite rosy pink. And 
You know what? If I'm just going to tint this, it's very rosy pink. It's going to be too opaque. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Uh, spray it through my brush. Then I'm just going to add some transparent medium. The base medium. Kind of boned. Now clear out the paint in it. It's a waste. I shouldn't have put so much paint in there. This is just a tinting process. I use some ETAC reducer base. Put that right in my cup and then just spray that through and it'll pick up the pigments along the side and it'll give it a real pastel uh, shade to it. You don't want to mix it around because then you're basically mixing the same color. You put it straight in. Give a spray through. It's going to take what's in the chamber. Thanks. And there's just a few areas I got to pink up. This is that flesh tone that I just mixed. And he's got quite a bit of red on the chin. I may add a little orange into this. Over here. And uh, over here. Hey, Charlie, you gotta get down, buddy. I can't hold you in my lap. Sorry. This is very soft, pastel y color. Just gonna mist a little. Seems to be clogged. There we go. Charlie, get down, bud. You can't get on me like this right now. He wants me to hold him. I must have a clot in the airbrush. That's a little bit of pink up here. Kind of. I can hear it in the spray. All right. All right, I'm gonna clean this out, pause this, clean it out, and come back with the original flush. Okay. I figured out what was going on. I never reduce the paint and for spraying at 20% PSI. It just didn't want to, or 20 PSI, it just didn't want to spray through. But anyways, I'm back to the original uh, color. I'm just going to mist over this upper just to take a little of this orange out. Just a little, not much. I've lost a little of my texture in there. And I gotta put some more, add some actual natural color down in the bottom. The original flesh tone.
And this actually is on the Bretter's side anyways. So think up its chin. And then let's do in his neck real quick. You can't see much of his neck, but get the original flesh tone in here on the neck. And then also up this side, eventually got to do his ears. Now, if you were doing opaques, You would have to mix the exact colors. I'm doing a more transparent. Okay. Got his neck in. Let's pink up his ears. Because all I got is that mid-tone that I put in there. Just be real careful. Trying to avoid too much overspray. I'm going to keep his ears out of focus anyways. All right, that ear's a little darker. Okay. Like so. Okay, okay, okay. You're looking real good. My wife's ecstatic about this painting. But this is what I've been doing. Oh, uh, yeah. I gotta... In his eyes, I did a lot of colored pencil which I want to uh, touch up something that I noticed. So I'm, I've got my polychromos pencils. And uh, let's see, what do I need? I need a blue-gray. And I don't want real dark. Because it can overpower quickly. And this was the purpose of this video that I'm shooting right now. To see, I gotta go a little bit darker than that one. It's just, his eyes gotta be tinted a little more. And over in here. And the same at the bottom. He's got a little bit of brown. I noticed popping through. He's got two little sp specular highlights. All right. And like I said, he's got a little bit of brown. I don't want to go heavy brown. Uh, just a light touch of it. Uh, let's see, trying to pick out what brown I think it is. I think it's like this. Just, it's got just a little brown tint. Right there. And again, I'm seeing a little brown right here. And... Got a brown dot right here. Okay. But we, you know, we can take uh, we can do up these lines a little bit and then I can soften it up with the airbrush. But this was one of the things I wanted to test with the colored pencils. You can take and smudge these down in. Now he's got darker. 
tone. Probably more like this down in here. And he's got a little bit. The only thing I do notice, the lines show up real strong. So, just be aware of that. Where with the airbrush, it's a little faded. Just get a few of these little spots in. Okay. The paper I'm using, by the way, is uh, Bristol Strathmore 300 series. And it's a plate surface, and which is working very well for uh, erasing back into with the Createx or the uh, Createx, okay, the ETAC EFX paints seems to be working very, very well. As you can see, it brought out that highlight right there. Scratching, on the other hand, I am not gonna say it works very well for scratching, it does not hold up to the blade. But a lot of things don't. Clayboard is to me one of the best things that holds up to the to a blade. Just erasing some of these highlights back in. My I have to say my airbrushing uh has improved greatly. Since I've been using eraser techniques, I spent years trying to figure it out, watching some of Drew Blair's videos. Tika, of course, the most famous one that everyone uh, that's involved with airbrushing knows. That's what caught my eye. I come from a background of doing see I like this board because I can rest my arm on it I don't know if you can see it yeah you can see I can rest my arm on it and it steadies my hand get a lot more accurate now I don't want to get the whole painting dirty I'm praying I've got enough space on my phone to do this. Like I said, I, I lost six hours of painting that I was trying to work into a movie for you guys. But I like in this paper as an intern uh, and an alternative to the clay board or illustration board. Would I say it could replace it? Depends. If you're going to do a high quality piece, go with your clay board, I would say. If you want to just do a practice piece or something just for a round your own house that you're not selling. I think this paper works really well. I have painted on the smooth, Bristol Strathmore smooth, and there's a little too much tooth in that. So, 
and with ETAC paints, you got the ability to work back into it, just like Createx. Just putting a few of these textures. I'm paying attention to the shape of them, really. I'm not just randomly doing these. And he's got one that little start of smile lines, but he doesn't have much. He's a young guy. For anybody that doesn't know who this is, this is Jordan Poyer from the Buffalo Bills. My wife and my favorite football team we absolutely love them we've been following them since early 90s even longer actually because you know I'm that old we won't discuss it Okay. Trying to trying to get this right. These were I did a bunch of pen, the pencil, colored pencil drawings that I gave away to um, Mackenzie, uh, Isaiah Mackenzie, and uh, one for Josh Allen. We were able to give it to Brittany, his girlfriend, at the uh, practice sex sessions over at St. John Fisher in Rochester, New York. And one to Dion Dawkins. However, I have one that uh, is of Stefan Diggs. And I was never able to get it to Stefan. He was uh, trying to get through to sign autographs for the kids. And he walked by, so I didn't get a chance to get it to him. It's too bad. Um, he's the only one. I've got it sitting down in my cellar in the box, all protected. So if anybody knows Stefan Diggs and can tell him, hey, contact Fred Wagner. He's got the drawing for you. No strings attached. It's just what I do. All right, as you can see, I can work back into this quite well. Especially since I re-wetted this. It's a couple days old. All right. And then for the chin, let's put a little bit of highlights back into the chin. Now that I've added more color, you can see it. I don't want to go rogue. Just a few. I mean, I could sit here and try to make every little pore and every little uh, nuance on his face. He's... Uh, It's got a few molds that show up that I got to paint in. Not terrible molds. Oh, he's horribly disfigured. The poor man. Yes, I need help. I know. It's just stuff like this. 
I'm going to just keep working this and working this. And then in the neck, uh, let's get this started. I'm just Adam's apple. On the neck, there's a lot of creases. And we just achieve that by this side to side stroke lifting. Over to the side, it gets a little, they get a little bit bigger. That's all there is, is to do in the texture on his neck. And then I'll add a few little lines. Now. Hi. What I'll probably do it for the rest of this video then is just show the progression photos as a slideshow. Uh, what I've been doing in the beard is first I airbrushed dots uh, and then I came in after that with dark browns and grays. Mostly, um, Payne's Gray was the one I used the most. I think it was the Payne's Gray here. Uh, but anyways, since I airbrushed over it a bit. Now again, these are going to be really harsh. So, the edge of the beard. This is why I wanted to see how the colored pencils worked for this process. Knock that back a little bit by rubbing it out. They don't have to be real strong or defined. But I do notice they will rub out easy and erase very easy. Okay. Then up there. Let's see. I'm trying to pick a colored pencil. That no, I don't want that dark. I want this. This is more of a warm gray. Now I could very easily adjust colors with my airbrush. I'm just trying to get a few things done in here so I can uh, process this video and get it up on YouTube for everyone to see. Now I see that this is incorrect. So it's gotta come out. more to that Do 
again back with a few darker lines. I'm using a real soft touch. You can also take like where you got a few pores, you can put a dot for like hair follicles coming through. Smudge those down a little bit, soften them. Works very well. All right, one last thing I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna take, pull out uh, my tube of watercolor, my white. And uh, get my watercolor brush back here, real fine point, because I I'm not liking when I want to do this highlights. And his eyes real bright. Being careful. That really not kicks that up, man, 100%. He's got a few little spots in his teeth. This is a honey based watercolor. He's got a couple in here. These will probably soak down into the paper a little bit. Get a little spot down here on this tooth that's really standing out. make his teeth stand out and shine. It was getting kind of hard because there's not a lot of room in there for me to erase. So I was trying to figure out, I was trying to scrape them in and they just looked terrible to me. Let's see. He's got another... And that one, and then a spot right here. And then over on this one. Like I said, scratching did not work on this. I could tone this white down if I wanted to mix it with something else. Or I can spray over it with some airbrush paint. Out the last little bits of highlights I want to emphasize on the teeth. Okay, I think that's good. So there you go. Another thing you can use. I mean, I could use watercolor and more. 
I got that idea from Marissa. And so we have it. Just trying to fill in these scratch marks because they, uh, they're sticking out a little bit too much. Whoops. You know, I do that so many times, I lose control. I must be old. Oh, wait, I am. And I was also using these up in here. Let's get a darker color. Um, I use actually a brown rather than black. But we can... Uh, Just go in and deepen this. And the same over on this one. Okay. That's all I'm gonna record for this video. And uh, let me give you a little shot of his neck so you can see what I'm doing down there. Sorry for the creaking. It's the goose neck. I'm my crazy setup. Hey, anyway, God bless y'all. Uh, stick around for the slides for the finishing of this video. And uh, I hope you've picked up a little something. I mean, I didn't do a whole lot. But, you know, at least there's something you could take away so long as I can transfer this and get it up on YouTube. You know, and maybe in my future, maybe God will bless me with a, a different camcorder and a program for on my computer so that I can make even better videos for teaching. It's what it's all about. God bless. Remember, like, subscribe. Be kind to others. Show them the love of Jesus. God bless.